and intercession this is a dimension of prayer warfare and intercession this is very important the bible already told us in john chapter 10 and verse 10 that satan is called the thief and that he comes with the singular goal of stealing killing and destruction apostle peter charged us in first peter 5 and verse 8 to be sober and to be vigilant he says for your adversary the devil like a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour hallelujah and then of course ezekiel chapter 22 i believe verse 30 he says and i sought for a man I like that scripture among them that he should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none so prayer becomes a prophetic platform for warfare what is warfare engaging through the understanding of scripture and establishing the victory that is in Christ you see that now over the situations that attempt to fight and play the authority in Christ it's important that you understand this but you see when it has to do with prayer there are various kinds of prayer that the Bible identifies I'm not going into that this is a charge this morning so that we pray the Bible tells us there is something called praying amiss am I right on that there are all kinds of prayer and the Bible is very clear as to the fact that not every kind of prayer produces power there is a recommended kind of prayer and a pattern of prayer that produces power hallelujah two conditions according to james chapter 5 and verse 16 that must be captured in the prayer of the righteous to produce power i want you to please listen now there are two important components as revealed in chapter 16 of james 5 that if and when they are not captured in your prayer your prayer cannot produce power number one the bible says the effectual fervent i like to reverse it for the sake of our understanding so number one the bible talks about fervency that the prayer of the believer that produces power power to influence power to manipulate power to establish according to divine order must be prayer that is fervent what does it mean to be fervent it means from the heart it means with zeal with passion and with truthfulness are we together very important jeremiah 29 and verse 13 in the dealings of god with men we learn from scripture and even from experience that god seems to respond to passion and sincerity and hunger it seems to me like the spirit of god does not pay so much respect to laxity and carelessness god wants to see intention and fire even in error he respects the passion and corrects you there is nowhere god sees passion that he ignores thou son of david have mercy on me i don't know whether what i'm doing is right or wrong but i'm not going to let you go if i may but touch the hem of his garment every time god sees passion he interprets it as the person being serious even if in ignorance so the bible says the fervent are we together the fervent from the heart jeremiah 29 13 he says and you shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart there is a level of seriousness and intention that must be invested in the prayer of the righteous if it is to produce power second chronicles chapter 15 we'll read verse 12 then for time we'll jump to we'll jump to 15 is god helping us already the bible says and they the nation of judah they entered into a covenant watch this to seek the lord god of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul notice now all of them was plunged into that covenant verse 16 the bible says and all judah rejoiced at the oath for they had okay thank you give us verse 15 
Just stop at verse 15. Did I give you? Yeah, 15 is fine. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart. And the Bible says they sought him with their whole desire. What was the result? He was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. The Bible says the fervent. You want the kind of prayer that changes things, changes you, and through you influences your world? It is prayer that comes with fervency, zeal, passion, seriousness. There were people in the Bible God did not take serious. And the Bible was not quiet about it. It was clear that God did not have respect for them. Because there was no fervency and no passion invested in their commitment whether their relationship or their activity the first of such expressions as we see um, was in the life of Cain and Abel the nature of their investment in their sacrifices and the violation of patterns or the observance of patterns led one sacrifice to be accepted and the other God did not have respect for it hallelujah fervency zeal and passion the bible said this about jesus himself that the zeal of the lord's house had consumed him is that true yeah this is the reason why he frowns at lukewarmness in revelation chapter 2. he wrote to one of the churches i think to ephesus or there about of philadelphia one of them and he says i wish that thou art hot or at least cold if you are hot i commend you if you are cold i redeem you but now you are lukewarm you are you are in between every time god saw people who swung to one side of the pendulum if they needed deliverance they admitted it and they were delivered if they were vibrant and full of fire he would commend them but he always frowned at people who were nonchalant passive careless even about spiritual things someone say fervent one more time say fervent that when believers pray it is important for them to have this understanding that they are not praying to an idol and all of them must be invested in that prayer number two this is the part that i want us to look closely to because in in truthful submission especially within the continent of africa i think we've done a good job in the area of fervency in prayer the average African prays with zeal, with passion, or at least a semblance of it. Am I right on that? <laughs> now, the second word that must be captured in our prayer to produce power is called effectual. Effectual. Lend me your attention. This is my message. What does it mean to be effectual? Effectual means to use or to engage in a way that avoids loss or waste of time and energy listen carefully effectual by definition means to use or to engage in a way that avoids loss l-o-s-s or waste of time and energy so you are effectual to the degree to which you are efficient and there is minimal loss of energy, of time, and resources. Am I right on that? The Bible says the kind of prayer that produces power in the spirit is prayer that is number one, fervent. Your heart condition, your zeal, your passion. But number two, it says it must be effectual. Most believers I observed here, they pray fervent, sincere, heartfelt prayers. But very few believers pray effectual prayers. Remember, we're going to pray. What then makes prayers effectual? It's important for us to understand. At what point do you know that your prayer is effectual? Is it by the sound of your voice? Is it by the motions that follow the prayer as well-intentioned as they are? Let me show you from scripture. Are you ready? What makes prayers effectual? Listen, 